took a long time to drop a frustrating game last night. Beautiful hot night at City Field again. Yeah, the young Nats fans want to get after this one and get back even and hopefully win a series here tomorrow night. So the East looks like this. The Mets are two back. Braves, Marlins are really struggling. Phillies are actually playing as well as anybody in the division right now. But the Nats' bottom line is two ahead with two to go in this series. It. I don't think it's a coincidence. The same pitchers keep matching up against each other every time the Nats and the Mets get together, and that's no exception tonight. Yeah, Joe Ross going to face the Mets for the second time in three starts. Did a good job the first time, but he's going up against a tough one in Jacob DeGrom. When you go back to their last meeting on July 21st, did a good job. Six and a third, gave up three runs on four hits, struck out five Mets. It's just typical Joe Ross start. He's not phased by the situation. Pound in the strike zone. Maybe had a little bad luck in that one, but this is the Mets ace. When you talk about what this guy's done in his last 12 starts, 7-2 and two with a 137 ERA, 91 strikeouts in just 11 walks. Opponents are hitting 157 in his last 12 starts against him. So a good pitchy matchup again tonight, but Jacob DeGrom is by far the Mets ace. And don't forget that all-star appearance of his, which was one of the best in recent memories by any pitcher in either league. Right in the middle of all that great pitching he's done for the last month or so. So when you're facing guys like this, FP, you better do the little things right. The Nats failed in that category last evening. Well, yeah, it's like playoff baseball in October. You have to do little things right to win the ball games. You're not going to take these guys deep when you're facing guys like Clayton Kershaw, Zach Greinke, Matt Harvey. Last night, Tanner Roark had a big at bat. He didn't get a bunt down. A single later, Jason Worth would have scored. Bryce Harper, after a Jason Worth leadoff double, grounds out to third base, trying to advance Jason Worth. So the little things add up. And if the Nats would have done the little things last night, they would have won that game 3-1. to one. Turns out they were walked off 2-1. to one. But if you want to win in October and you want to win big yeah. series, you have to do the little things. Yeah, that's the old baseball adage. You do all those little things right for six months. You look up at the end of September, and you're in the playoffs. You've won. So... The Mets aren't going away, it appears. The Nats keep trying to swat them away, but now they have Yoenna Cespedes in the lineup tonight. Yeah, they have a big threat in the lineup, and it'll be interesting to see if Joe Ross goes around him or goes right after him. But when you talk about the Mets, I, I mean, they had the tough walk-off loss against the Padres. A lot of drama in Queens, the last homestand, the last couple of days. They're still finding ways to win, and with Wilmer Flores in the walk-off last night, they seem rejuvenated for sure. Well, the Nets have a guy behind the plate tonight who, with his bat, has done plenty of damage against the Mets over the years, and that's Wilson Ramos. Two-run homer against them recently at Nets Park, opposite field. 337 career, nine homers, 37 RBIs. The Buffalo looking to come up big tonight.
you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by Night Point Systems. They offer the technology you need when you need it. Bryce Harper fans on the concourse here. Mets fans trailing them. It's going to be an interesting game, too, tonight. Good pitching is on tap. Now the Nats have wrapped up another month, and for the second time this year, they played under 500 ball in a month's time. It was a 10 and 13 April when the offense just wasn't clicking. Then it was a plus 20 on the run side in an 18 and 9 May when the Nats won two out of every three games. Three over in June. The runs kept on coming, but it's been a bit of a sparse July as the injuries took their toll and minus two on the run side. Right now, the Nats have scored 420 runs and given up 388. So, two game lead over the Mets. Plenty of support getting the field ready. Trying to focus in on game two. Should be fun. Ross and DeGrom. Go! good call on Bryce Harper but Bryce got himself tossed it was an inconsistent strike zone all night there was a called third to Ian Desmond a called third to Jason Worth, and this called third to Bryce Harper that could have went either way this one just a good frame job by Travis Darno bought the call and you can see Jerry Meal saying knock it off he gave Bryce a little bit of room to vent Bryce kept going at him he got thrown out of the game and his manager said afterwards that he has to stay in the ball game and we said as much last night during the broadcast and Bryce's comments were pretty candid after the game. He said he thought Jerry Meals had a bad strike zone all night long and he had to stick up for what was going on for his teammates. But to see a focused Bryce Harper ready to play this ball game, and it's a big one. The Nats lineup pretty much the same. Wilson Ramos is in there tonight. And Lobatone was batting eighth last night, but the catcher when Ramos is in there bat seven. So against DeGrom, Wilson three for eight, a homer, four RBIs. And he comes in with five home runs, 18 batted in in his last 32 games. Rendon sits safely for a five game since coming back. Ryan Zimmerman has four hits in four games. And Jason Worth has at least one hit in three of four games since he has come back. Jacob DeGrom for the Mets tonight. And uh, this guy's got all kind of stuff. Yeah, no decision last time out, July 26 against the Dodgers. All he did was pitch seven and two-thirds shutout innings. Gave up just two hits in those seven and two-thirds. Eight strikeouts, two walks. 113 pitches his last start, 75 first strikes. Get this, he has struck at least eight batters and allowed no more than two hits four times this year. That's the most in the majors. And his last 12 starts, seven and two with a 1-3-7. So he's got it going on, and the Nats are about to face the Mets ace. 
So the defense, some new guy in left field named Cespedes. Granderson moves to center tonight. Kelly Johnson in right to Hata Murphy left side. Last night's hero Wilmer Flores at second base. Lucas Duda at first and Travis Darno behind the plate. Every move by Joanna Cespedes. And I was eyeing him during batting practice today. Every move he made, cameras clicking, videographers just trailing him everywhere around the field. And by the way, he's wearing number 52, which was Carlos Torres's number. Torres graciously switching to number 72 out of the net or the Mets bullpen. So Cespedes has his customary 52. Yeah, so meet the Met. Oakland until the trading deadline last year on to Boston. And then the Tigers this year. Cespedes hit 293 for Detroit. 18 home runs, 61 RBIs. As STG takes us inside his numbers that he brings to the Big Apple. On top of all that, he's got a cannon. Yeah, yeah. Remember that videotape of the throw he made from Oakland? Mm -hmm. Left, what left field corner last year? Amazing. Fourth year for Jordan Baker in the big leagues. He has the plate. Jerry Mills, the crew chief at third base tonight. Paul Emmel second, Andy Fletcher at first. And I know things can be really fickle here in New York, but for the time being, this city has fallen in love with the Mets again. We'll see how long it lasts. Big crowd tonight, fireworks after the game. They were advertising fireworks and fireworks Saturday night. I mean, listen to this place. It reminds me of Shea Stadium. They're cheering the first pitch. Which is a strike low in the zone. Underway at 7 12 p.m. Anthony 25 for 90 in 24 games total on the season. Looking for his first base hit against DeGrom. And that's the breaking ball that misses Lone away. Taking his time getting back in there. Fastball away, and that was a strike all night last night. With Harvey running it back to the corner. DeGrom just missing out there. Two balls, one strike. Looks like a low zone to start with. Other than one pitch, everything down from DeGrom. And Rendon gets jammed and fights it off. Well, you see where Travis Darno went with two strikes right there. He gave the sinker sign. He set up away. That was a pitch Matt Harvey dominated the Nats with last night and would have dominated any ball club with it. It was 97 98. He was starting off the plate away to righties and running it back, just nipping that front corner. And, and Travis Darno went right to the well in the first two strike count he's seen here tonight. Didn't execute it though. 2 2 pitch. Out of play again. The Grom's 27 years of age. Four years ago, Tommy John surgery after so, his first professional season. Watch this right here with me. This is a way, but it's straight away. So as a hitter, you can handle this pitch. Last night with Matt Harvey, that pitch was starting four or five inches off the plate, and he was running it back, and your mind tells you that it's a ball. It's way outside, and it came back late. Yeah, not to mention it was 97 with very little reaction time. What a good at bat so far for Rendon. He's trying to get aboard, but the byproduct of that is giving his teammates a good look at DeGrom here. Make DeGrom work. Try to get an early run. Joe Ross not going to be phased by the situation, but he'd love to take the mound with a lead. Fastball up, two and two. Twelfth game of the year between the ball clubs. Nat six, Mets five. Washington still has taken three out of five here. And Rendon hits one hard out to center. Granderson hustling and he's going to get there. He's in center field tonight with Juan Lagares in the dugout. Went a long way for that first out. It's a good at bat by Anthony Rendo. Nothing to show for it, but he made the ground work and he finishes it with a bolt to left center field. 
And you look at the flags up top. They're blowing from the left field corner over to right field. Made it have that ball up a little bit. And you see the dimensions here at City Field. Long ways in left center field. There was questions if Curtis Granderson could cover ground out there, and he proved his skipper right on the very first hitter of the game. And the dimensions here cozier than they were when this ballpark first opened in 09. About 10 feet shorter from straight away one side to the other. Here's Escobar. Had a base hit last night that tied the game for the Nats in the eighth inning. That sizzling single up the middle. He's hitting 322 against right handed pitching. Eighth best in the National League. And his 312 batting average has him in the top seven. Pretty good success against this pitcher with a base on balls. Flores shaded up the middle at second. There's no defense for that. And you know Escobar drops his 110th hit of the year into right field. So two good at bats by the Nationals to start this one up. You know Escobar hits a 2-1 slider the other way. There goes the no hitter and here comes Bryce Harper. You can hear in the background. But a nice piece of hitting. And even more important than that hit, they're, they're making them grind here early. They are. Maybe some nights it's not a good thing to be following a guy who throws 97 with great command and movement. 13 pitches already for DeGrom and two hitters. Here's Bryce Harper. Bryce had his long on base streak end last night. Both overall and on the road. He still hit safely eight of his last nine games. That's Matt Harvey. Ish. There he is. Harper. That's a base hit. Escobar will make the turn and keep on going. That's Kelly Johnson out there. And immediately a corner situation for the Nets. It took them till the sixth inning to get two hits last night. So three good at bats in counting for the Nationals here in the top of the first. Anthony Rendon with a line drive out to left center. You know Escobar base hit to right. Now Bryce Harper hits a bullet into right. And a good read by you know Escobar going first to third on Kelly Johnson. Stage is set for Ryan Zimmerman to put his ball club ahead. Zimmerman's had some success against DeGrom as well. He'll step in at 212. 48 hits on the year. 35 RBIs. I like the Zim toe hold dance that he's been doing lately when he gets in the box trying to grind that back foot in. He's doing a little a little shimmy up there. Zimmerman up the middle hit it so hard it's going to carry and now Escobar can't get back to tag. That's a tough break on a ball that was scorched. But, but that's exactly what we talked about in the open today. The little things in the big games that you have to do correct. You know, Escobar broke down the third baseline. If he goes back and tags on that, he scores. Granderson doesn't have a good arm. Watch Escobar, top of the screen. Ball up off the bat. You have to go back to the bag. He didn't. By the time he got back, he couldn't tag up. And it cost Ryan Zimmerman an at bat and an RBI, and more importantly, the ball club a run. Yeah. Ryan Zimmerman very unlucky on that one and here's worth. DeGrom fooling no one here in the top of the first. And Ryan's not too happy in the Nationals dugout. I think he's mad at Escobar. He thought that ball should drop. It's a fastball upstairs. You never see emotion from Ryan Zimmerman. Watch this. Big game. Yep. Had an offer last night, then you hit a ball like that. Your first time up in the next game and nothing to show. Worth is it safely three or four games since returning. <clears throat> Here's
That'll be right on the outside edge to even things up. I like the move by Matt Actually, Williams. Actually, 2-1, sir. Putting Jason Wirth in the, in the five hole tonight. Let, let him get acclimated. Let him get to see some pitches. Get his rhythm. You know, that, that's a big thing to hit third in any lineup. And let him get a feel for the game first. And then, you know, see what you're going to do here in a week or so. Maybe a few games, however they work it. Toronto start making some noise now. Long first inning for DeGrom, but a pitch away from putting a zero on the board. That's looking for that big two out hit. This will give Harper a head start on a two out payoff pitch coming. I didn't think it was that close until you looked at pitch track. Yeah. Pitch track doesn't adjust to a 6 5 guy. It's good in and out, but up and down, it doesn't adjust to the hitter strike zone. 3 2 and worth staying alive. Because I think every single hitter in baseball has a different vertical strike zone based on your height. Yeah. That's why little guys walk more. That's like big guys have to cover more pitches north and south. So Jason Worth has a higher strike zone than say Danny Espinosa. And as you can see DeGrom's given up some first inning runs this year. That'll load the bases. Heck of an at bat by Jason Worth and now it goes to Ian Desmond. So a pitch as you mentioned already Carp there was a strike last night all night Jason struck out on a pitch like this from Tyler Clifford Ian Desmond struck out we showed an outside strike to Bryce Harper and Jason worth that little balk there wondering if that was a ball or a strike probably couldn't hear the umpire because the crowd was so loud. So an early visit by Dan Warden. That's in that game against DeGrom. Didn't break through till the fifth inning on the Ramos home run. So he's on deck with Ian Desmond stepping in. So with one out, Escobar dropped that single into right. Bryce Harper last one into right. First and third after the unlucky Zimmerman line drive. Worth draws a long base on balls. But you want to know how it's a big game? How many times do you see a pitching coach out to the mound in the first inning with his ace on the hill? September or October. Right. <laughs> Usually. Ian Desmond trying to bust up an 0 for 11 here. It's always been great with the bases loaded. He's also three for ten career against DeGrom with a home run three RBIs. Pitch number twenty five coming. Target in. Desmond up the middle that will get through. Here comes Harper around third and the Nats have a crooked number on the board. Ian Desmond RBIs number thirty three and thirty four to nothing. Bat. Died a hero. Two nothing Nationals. Good job of staying inside this pitch. DeGrom trying to jam Ian Desmond. He did, but he got his hands into a good position where he got enough of the bat on the baseball to shoot it up the middle. Look at the dugout in the background. That scores Escobar. That scores Harper. Line is moving big time here in the first against the Mets. Jacob DeGrom. Yeah, that's the third hit, and a walk has occurred. And here's Ramos. A Mets nemesis. See, this this is Nats baseball right here. You ask what their identity is. It's keep the line moving. It's base hit, walk, base hit, double, whatever it takes. It's not everybody swing for the fences and hit a home run. When they win, this is the type of inning they put together two or three times in a game. So one over has been busted up with Desmond, and now Ramos trying to break an 0 for 12. Inside the numbers on Wilson Ramos, guys who slug against Mets pitching. Right in the middle of a whole bunch of great hitters. It's 
Eighty nine outside one one. Michael A. Taylor. Love to see him get up here as many productive hits as he's had lately. That ball diving on Ramos. One ball, two strikes. Pitch number 29 coming. And pitch number 28, the best pitch Jacob DeGroms have made all night. Change up 87. Wow, what a take on another changeup. Jacob DeGrom's thinking to himself, how did he not swing at that pitch? Another changeup from DeGrom, 85. Watch the late fade. Ramos picked it up early. He's seen one, second one, fish ain't biting. Three, two, two runners on the move. Another off speed and he got a little one hopper back to the mound. So how do you shut down a big crowd put a two on the board in the top of the first on a clutch single by Ian Desmond slicing its way up the middle scoring Escobar and Harper. Now Joe Ross will look for the shutdown inning. The Nets. The Mets have the lowest batting average, the fewest runs in all of baseball. But looking for a boost by the guy hitting two spots in front of Wilmer Flores, who hit his 11th home run of the year last night, drove in his 42nd. Cespedes will be facing Joe Ross in the first inning after Granderson and Murphy. And here's the 22 year old rookie. Yeah, facing the Mets for the second time in his last three starts. Last start, three to one loss against Pittsburgh. Six innings, five hits, gave up three runs. Struck out seven Pirates through 78 pitches. So fastball slider changed the arsenal. Fastball average at 93. And he's a strike thrower. Look for the Mets to be aggressive early. That's right on the inside edge. Good fastball. I mean, it's got to feel good for him to take the mound with a 2 nothing lead. Big crowd here at City Field, huge game, biggest game he's pitched in. Yeah, early inning scoring has been a problem for the Nats lately. Runs that fastball away from Granderson, who fouls it off to the left. Curtis in the ball game last night, one for five. He's one for three against Ross. 
with an at score in the first inning they're 24 and 5. They've been 24 and 5 for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. Oh two looked like it was right in there. Hmm. Mercedes Benz top of the zone right. Well we noted first couple of pitches of the game the low fastball. Seems to be Jordan Baker's call so far. That's too low. 2 2. So, Kurt, my, my point is that Curtis Granderson, top of his zone with his crouch, is right here. Where maybe Jason Wirtz, top of his zone, is right here. Well, that was a little high, but you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah but, but, but the vertical strike zone is different from the horizontal, is the same for everybody, or should be. And that's a strike to Jason Worth and a ball to Curtis Granderson. Granderson has walked 53 times this year. That is sixth most in the league. Ross has only walked three batters. He won't walk Curtis. And picking that one off is Rendon for the first out. I said the defense. Yeah, the top of Jason Worth's zone in left field. I mean, he's in left. <laughs> He would have been 7 8 where I drew that line. Taylor Harper, the outfield, Desmond Escobar, left side, Rendon Zimmerman, right side, and Wilson Ramos down the plate. And there was a good sight today here at uh -huh. City Field. Denard Span working out. He took some hacks. Big step for him today in the right direction. He's just waiting to see how he makes out tomorrow and the next day. Dan had a chat with Denard. We'll hear more from our brilliant reporter later. He is brilliant, isn't he? Well, until his next report. You're I only mean, as good as your last one. That's right. <laughs> I mean, just ask him. He's brilliant. All right, sit down, Dan. <laughs> no balls, one strike. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to stand by the dugout with a left-handed batter in there. Come on. <laughs> Wave it up to the booth. Tighten it up down there, would you? <laughs> there he is on deck, UNS Cespedes. This place will roar when he is announced. And the 0 2. Ross takes that slider, drops it down and in on the lefty. Question bigger ovation, Cespedes or Flores? I got Flores. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't have a decibel meter, but I think they're both going to be similar. It'll be thunderous for both. Homer Flores, overnight rock star. Well, last three or four days. Pitch up and Murphy pumping. So Ross second start against the Mets two of the last three as FP noted to six start in the big leagues two and three with a 303 interesting that he's been around long enough to get a decision every time he is pitched. Oh that's a great off speed offering in the dirt and Murphy can't get it two outs here's Johannes Cespedes the left fielder number 52. Yoannis Cespedes. I don't see the tabloids today. Was there any headlines that said Metspedes? I don't know. 29 years of age. Dealt over here by the Tigers. By the way, when he was dealt, he was on a four game hitting streak. Eight for 17. 28 doubles, 18 homers, 61 batted in in 102 games. We got to see him in Oakland last year. Great slider by Joe Ross. From the middle of the zone to the very edge. Another. And there's going to be another. The Joe Ross slider early is just so late and just disappearing under the bat. The one he threw to Daniel Murphy might have been the best one he's thrown this year. Says for this. Right up on the plate. So he does throw another one. That ball hooked foul. <laughs> 
269 career hitter. You can always go fastball in here and back to the slider in a 2 2 count if you want. Just to keep him from diving out over the plate because he's guessing slider. Ramos sets up outer half. There's another one. And Cespedes is hanging in there. And the reason why you throw that fastball, just so you have a little doubt in your mind, you don't feel real confident in reaching across the plate and serving one to right field. Move his feet a little bit with a two seam fastball. Let him feel that fastball. They go out with the slider, outside with the slider, and a 2 2 count. That was 97 hit out to Desmond. So Joe Ross a rookie getting a shutdown inning like a guy who's been around a while. Worst trade ever. I like the Ross deal. <laughs>he just mentioned an arts fan back with the ball club today here in new york took some swings in the cage today 30 ish swings he said first time he swung a bat in about three weeks did some throwing on the field some running he's starting to feel better with those back spasms and he said he's really missed being around the team and not being a part of the playoff push he's going to rev things up these next few days test out that back see where he's at he's ready to come back well that's great news and we miss him terribly that's our coons.com Sideline report when you're talking cars you're talking coons you see how excited he was to be back around the guys today in the clubhouse And, and you could really see how much he missed it. You know some guys you can't really tell yeah, yeah you know, I mean he was Excited to get back He wants to get back in the lineup and he feels like he's letting people down. He's not He'll be back and he's gonna help this club when it means the most And the guy in the batter's box. It's only apropos. He's up while we're talking about Denard, because Michael A. Taylor has filled in well. Batting 243, nine homers, 41 RBIs, 324 over his last nine games. Michael striking out a bit lately, though. He went after some bad pitches last night, fanned his last four times up. So DeGrom gave up two runs early. We'll see if he gets his game on track. And here's Joe Ross. Good crowd here tonight. Yeah, they had 36,000 plus last night. Ballpark seats almost 42,000. A lot of folks still coming in. Fireworks afterward. And Ross will hit a free hopper out to Ruben Tejada. Two outs. Dollar Hot Dogs presented by Hatfield Monday, August 3rd. Nats take on the Diamondbacks, 7.05 start. Dollar Hot Dogs will be available for purchase at all Nats dog stands until the start of the sixth inning. That's while supplies last. Get your game tickets now at nationals.com. Hot dogs for a buck. Steven taking time out before his next rehab start. Word has it he'll do that one more time, then hopefully back in the rotation. Here's Anthony Rendon hit the ball about 390 
to deep left center first time up. Eighty nine on the ball cutting away from the right hander. Fortieth pitch coming here in the second. Yeah, Thirty one of them 18 strikes in that two run first. Good take. Natcher seeing his breaking ball well. And Ramos seeing those change ups pretty well. On the edge with 94. Outfield around to the right for the gap shooter Rendon. Kelly Johnson way over toward the line. And off speed diving strikes out. The Nats leadoff man Rendon 0 for 2. DeGrom trying to put his evening back together. 2 0 Nats. Check Powell at first delivers fly ball well hit deep left field it is going to be the 500th home run of a brilliant major league career Frank Robinson has done it. Uh, the wonderful voice of Chuck Thompson the old Orioles announcer moment in history brought to you by University of Maryland University College so Frank former Nats manager of course among others went into the Hall of Fame with Hank Aaron happy Chandler commissioner of baseball Frank hit 294 586 homers 1812 RBIs in 21 years 10 of those with the Reds six with the Orioles and still the only man to be an MVP in each league the great Frank Robinson bottom of the second Lucas Duda 0 for 2 when he faced Joe Ross. Nice heater upstairs, 96. Duda, Flores, Kelly Johnson, bottom of the second for the Mets. First inning with 17 pitches, 12 strikes for Joe. Duda did not start against Gio last night. It's interesting. They started Daniel Murphy at first base, left handed hitter. Because they wanted Uribe in the lineup. Dude, with six home runs in his last six games. He's the hottest Met hitter. There's the toast of New York right now. Wilmer Flores. Challenge fastball due to late. And we saw Lucas Duda when he was at Nats Park in a big time scuffle. 
And I always say with leg kick guys, they're either hitting 500 or they're hitting 100. There's real, really no in between. And it's just because it's a timing thing. And when the timing's right, look out. When it's not, look out. Yeah, when he was in the lineup against Ross, 21st of July, he was hitting 141 his previous 22 games. He didn't start the night before because, yeah, Gio was on the mound. Now the count goes to three and two. Ross also went to three and two on Granderson. Leading off the first before a ground out to second. Just missed. He went with the slider. That's after first base runner. Lucas Duda walks for the 45th time. Oh, of course. By far. Two for three with an RBI against Ross. Well, he hammered that ball last night. One of the deepest parts of the park. He's bounced into six double plays on the year. And Ross buries one quite a pickup by Wilson Ramos Felipe Rivero threw one right down the middle trying to get it in I mean, he didn't really miss his spot just sometimes hitters get paid to hit and Wilmer Flores went from really 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 popular to cult hero in one swing it's a great game. I mean, you're just a pretty good player one day and the next day you're a rock star. Love it. Ross gets a strike. Borderline pitch, he got the call two and one. Good frame by Ramos. Yeah. It's really the first high strike Baker's called tonight. Morris doesn't walk much. 13 times all year in 346 at bats. And a long ball to left. Worth sees it, catches it. And superhero status on hold for at least one more at bat. Did he go over the fence to catch that? I can't wait to see the replay. It's a long ways away from where we're sitting. Worth with a good beat on it. He went back to the WB Mason side. I think it was just going to be off the top of the fence. Let's all take a look together. But Wilmer Flores got everybody excited here in Flushing. But a pretty good route by Jason Worth getting back, setting himself up. Yeah, probably been right below the orange line. Joe Ross. Shaking his head, but an ounce and out. Especially when you get Babe Flores out. No, oh, he almost got Wilmered. Here's Kelly Johnson. Two for 14 as a Met, including an 0 for 10. <laughs> he's a verb now. He's, he's become I mean, a verb. He's a <laughs> and now he's a verb? Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I got to get it together. Almost fell out of the booth on that. <laughs> Kelly Johnson having a pretty good year with the Braves. Guy who can move around, play different positions. That's a tapper foul. He was with Atlanta 05 through 09. Diamondbacks for two years, then Toronto for two, Tampa Bay two years ago, Yankees, Red Sox, and Orioles last year. Then he had 275 for his first ball club this year before the trade. Came over here with a rebate. 0 2 with one out. 
And Ross just dropping that slider into the dirt. Wilson Ramos has done a good job of keeping it blocked. Target away from Ramos. And a ball driven to left for Jason Worth. Shifting to his left. Jason still getting used to the slices and all the other opposite field things he's seeing over there. Yeah, good call. Good swing by Kelly Johnson. Jason Worth setting himself up. Ball kind of dying on him. Good play. Two outs, Travis Darno. He was on the DL when Ross faced the Mets in DC. I mean, to your point, and he hasn't been out there a lot, he still really hasn't looked comfortable in left field. And, and he's as good a right fielder as we've seen the last couple of years, the way he's played right at Nats Park and on the road wherever. But yeah, I mean, you made a really good point. He's still figuring it out out there. And if you're wondering the difference, I mean, it's a different position. I mean, the ball comes off the bat different in right field than it does left. And I think of the three outfield positions, left is, a, is, is definitely the hardest because, you know, you have a lot of pull right handed hitters in the league that hit the ball a lot harder that way. No two and Ross showing the breaking ball low and away to Darno. You know everything to the line and right is to his glove side everything to the line and left is you know you have to reach across your body I mean it's just a different with the way the ball comes off the fence. I remember what a good job he did in center field when the Nats played him out there a couple of years ago center the easiest right second easiest and left the hardest in my opinion. One two pulled Escobar backing up. And just as Rendon gets to the bag, he throws him out. And Escobar will lead off top of the third. His base hit got the two-run rally going in the first. It's Yon Escobar. There goes a no hitter. Bryce Harper, first and third. And then with two outs, Ian Desmond, fastball in, hit it back up the middle, a couple RBIs. A little bash brother action with Tony Tarasco at first. Put the Nats up two to nothing. That's where we're at, in case you missed it. Escobar, Harper, and Zimmerman. All three hit the ball well, first inning. The Escobar Harper base hits the Zimmerman laser to center that was caught Jacob deGrom two innings 42 pitches 26 strikes but he had just 11 against Taylor Ross and Rendon in the top of the second. 
Escobar continues to hit right handed pitching very well up around 325 or so now. That ball's hit. He saw Murphy playing deep and he pops it up over the screen. I mean, Sky Report says bun on Daniel Murphy, a guy that's known for his offense way more than his defense. Second base is best position, and they're trying to take advantage with the base hit bun against him. That ball hammered, but it was 86. Escobar out in front. And he goes with the heat at 94. Boy, they're getting some good hacks against Jacob DeGrom here early. Nats are getting cheated. Seeing it big. And he IDs the slider. Escobar jammed and he'll need a new bat. See if he gives it to somebody. Yeah. It might take too much time to give it to somebody. He does at home all the time when he makes outs. The bat boy. Wait, here we go. Wait. That's a couple of bats. But he's calling for one out of the rack in the dugout. Bat boys are required to have another bat or two for every hitter that comes up. So they're on the move constantly, but. Escobar didn't want the ones the bat boy on the field was holding. Yeah, that one no good. That one no good. It fits you hell on it. One and two. And Escobar now working the count back even. First couple of hitters really set the tone in that inning for the Nats. Getting some good rips. Yeah, I love the aggressive nature. They're, they're seeing the fastball. They're on the fastball. Tyra Bet from Mercedes Benz. And another base hit for Unel Escobar. Professional hitter. So that uh, two for 21 thing is long gone. He's now hit safely in three of his last four at bats. And after that little mini skid he was on, he is back. Well, it was a great at bat. He was getting good rips the whole AB, and he finally squares something up. Looked like an off speed pitch from Jacob DeGrom, and he hit it right in the 5.5 hole. I'll tell you what. What a get by Mike Rizzo in that trade for Tyler Clippard. I, I had no idea that Yunel Escobar was this good this offseason. Not afraid to admit that. Yeah, you know, you hear about a guy, 276 career hitter. You don't hear much about his defense. I mean, he is just over achieved in every department for this club. He's just ready to play on every pitch, not every day. Everyone says he's ready to play every. No, he's ready to play on every pitch, whether it's offense, whether it's defense. The flair he has, the enthusiasm he has for the game is infectious to say the least. And you love to see somebody having fun playing the game. And I, and I think if you see, you know, Escobar in a three game series and you're a visiting team, I, I could see why he rattles some cages every now and then. But if you see him play for six months every single day, you realize it's just a true love for the game and he's not trying to show anybody up. And I think AJ Cole drilled him on purpose or uh, Garrett Cole the other day drilled him on purpose in Pittsburgh. And I don't know why, but you could tell he was hitting all of his spots and all of a sudden he just hit him. 
And it might be for that reason. Who knows? But he has a passion for the game. He plays it the right way, and he's fun to watch play every day. Two and one. Bryce Harper was behind. He has taken an off-speed pitch and a fastball to get ahead here. Pulled it hard first time up, and he got under that one. That was 90 up in the zone. Lucas Duda for the first down. City Field in New York opened one year after Nationals Park. And this place, as we've mentioned a couple of times in the series, getting as loud and as raucous as at old Shea Stadium that used to be right behind where we're sitting. I'll tell you one thing about switching ballparks. Dozens of announcers have been saved concussions from the old radio booth or and the TV booth at Shea. You'd walk in there and if you were over about five eight. It was Chuck and Duck. It, it was. And, and by the way Shea's number has been retired evidently here at City Field. Place would get loud wouldn't it. It was nuts. Big games there were fun. Big rats there were fun too. <laughs> There's huge rats in the dugout. Absolutely. I just uh, see a couple of nods in agreement of, from the, the guys in the booth. The it. size of small cats. They'd be running everywhere. Is that a cat? No. It's a rat. 1 1 to Zimmerman, who just killed the ball first time up on a low line drive to center. 2 and 1. Maybe with that in mind. DeGrom staying away from Ryan. 95 miles an hour on that out. I would have guessed higher. And you would have lost. Still ahead 2 1, but who's counting? Yeah, you are. Zimmerman, another scorcher. That one hit the mound on its way through. Wilmer Flores made a good try and Ryan Zimmerman finally gets a reward for a couple of great swings tonight. Oh his helmet would have been broken into 10 pieces if Wilmer Flores got that one. You saw the frustration after his first at bat. You usually don't see from Ryan Zimmerman and he's been locked in. And I think as a hitter you get frustrated when your swing is right and you're not getting hits. When your timing is off you're not getting hits you don't see the frustration but Ryan Zimmerman absolutely locked in right now face it up the middle. Another visit from Dan Worthen so. There is something going on with Jacob DeGrom tonight, you think. I'm not saying he's hurt or anything, but the stuff just isn't there, and the Nats have hit him hard. Or Dan Worthen likes to go to the mound, is what I'm thinking. Talk to Ryan about the flyout to deep right field last night. He said he hit that ball right on the barrel, and maybe his bat was broken from batting practice. He used his game bat in batting practice yesterday, and he couldn't figure out why it broke. But he hit that ball right on the barrel and we saw he just had like a spear in his hand and the ball went about 300 and what 65 feet to right. Yeah. Right center. Here's worth long at bat and a base on balls first time up. That loaded him up and Desmond came through with a big two out two run single. And this fly ball will play for Kelly Johnson in right. Escobar tagging. He'll head for third. Johnson, as he should, throws into second. Tricky little hop there for Ruben Tejada. Tricky little hop almost turned into a run right there. Ruben Tejada fell with that ball in an in between hop. Daniel Murphy wasn't backing him up. So if this ball gets by Tejada, it almost did, it would have been a run. Watch just a routine throw in from the outfield get weird here at the end. Nobody behind Tahada, keep in mind. And you see the tricky little hop he catches behind his body, almost hit the base. Maybe that's what messed him up. Well, guess who with two outs? That ball comes running back into the zone at 96. So we and Desmond now four for 11 career against DeGrom with four make it five RBIs.
way outside with that one. So the Nats are making him average right now 21 to 22 pitches per inning. Target in. And Desmond with an inside out swing. Well out of play down the right field side. Well, there's fireworks here tonight at City Field, but on August 7th, there'll be fireworks at Nats Park. Rockies in town. Post game freedom fireworks presented by Kellogg's. United States Navy Ceremonial Guard drill team will kick off the display. Go to nationals.com slash promotions for more info. Two strike battle begins for Ian Desmond. Darno moves outside. Fastball out there. Sixty five pitches. And on one and two, he went off speed, and Ian Desmond stayed right with it. They go inside again. Oh, we're guessing hit speeds again. 101. I'll go 98. Whoa! Oh, he's barreling right, up some back baseballs even. tonight. Man, you obliterated him. Yeah. That's a good foul ball right there. Nasty sinker from Degrom. All kinds of run on it. He buys himself another pitch. Inside the numbers from STG with Jacob Degrom's ranks. ERA at 2.05. Hits per nine innings low. By the way, Grinky 1.41, a ridiculous ERA below his. Opponents batting average way down there. Max Scherzer right in on a lot of those numbers as well. 2 2 to Desmond. Dean's going to take one down the middle. Up a bit. But DeGrom gets the call for his third strike out of the night. And he puts another zero on the board. Nats still lead though, 2 0. Twenty three strikes in his first two innings time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo use hashtag Nats couch cam and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. That's the United States Tennis Center which is literally across the parking lot where Shea used to be. 
Then the seven train runs on those tracks and they are building a retractable roof. It won't be ready for the U.S. Open, which begins in just a couple of weeks here, but it'll be ready next summer. That's the most raucous event in tennis. I had a chance to work the U.S. Open in 1995. Totally different from any other tennis venue in the world because it's a New York crowd. And you can figure that out. Is raucous tennis event an oxymoron? <laughs> kind of. But not in Flushing. Is that like we're having a party in the library? I think the guy who thrived the most there over the years because of the atmosphere was Jimmy Connors. He just loved it here. That crowd reflected his personality on the court. Here's Jacob DeGrom. Eight hits on the year. A couple of RBIs, three sacrifice bunts, a 202 hitter career. Two balls, one strike. Yes, shortstop in college and then moved to closer his junior year. Then starter, then all star. Mixing things up pretty well. Had a great slider going right out of the chute tonight. Pretty good swing, but it's a long swing. I feel like a fastball in, you have trouble getting to a fast, a mid 90s fastball in. And that's what Joe Ross features. And Joe's been up with his fastball here. And DeGrom having a pretty good AB. He's, He's batting eighth tonight. Tejada next before Granderson. Yeah, Terry Collins does this with the Grom because he's such a good hitter, but I feel like that fastball ends open. Let's see if they decide to go in there. There it is. He's out. Not where Ramos was set up, but it had plates. Second strikeout. Well, if you're reading swings, it's a big long swing from the Grom. So he's going to cover off speed pitches. He's going to hit a low 90s fastball wherever, but a mid 90s fastball in the inner half, he's not getting to with that swing. And he didn't even offer at it because I don't think he could hit it. Pretty good at bat though by the Mets pitcher to make Joe Ross fire that many bullets. And strike three on the Mercedes Benz pitch track. Here's Ruben Tejada batting ninth. 0 for 3 against Ross when they met 11 days ago. Couple of knocks in the number two spot last night. 95 in there. Outer half, lower part of the strike zone. Jammed it. Good pitch. Rendon shifts to his right. Sidearm whip. Two down. I mean, I've heard there's none left, but you never know. They might have restocked. Cox Solution stores are giving away a Bob Carpenter T-shirt. Visit Cox.com for your nearest store. You don't need to be a Cox customer, just a big Bob Carpenter fan. T-shirts are available while supplies last. People told me on Twitter that you are a hot commodity on a T-shirt. First time Bob and Hot had ever been used in the same sentence. <laughs> Top of the order, Granderson. I just hope they visited one store that was sold out. The others still have a few. We need to get some for us. Granderson to the right side. Ryan Zimmerman to the bag. And what a good inning for Joe Ross. His quickest so far. Zimmerman takes care of that. Bottom three coming up. Two nothing. Nats.
August 14th with the AVET brothers. Don't miss the only DC show and their Jekyll and Hyde tour. Great seats still available. Get your tickets at nationals.com slash Zach Brown Band or visit nationals.com to purchase your tickets today. July 21st at Nationals Park. Wilson Ramos right center. Anything to the opposite field over that wall is something to talk about. That was Wilson's second time up that night. But the Nats only two runs on the board and a 7-2 loss. They had won the previous night 7-2 behind Geo. And then you all remember what happened on Thursday afternoon when the Nats came from behind with three in the eighth. The Taylor and Espinosa hits. Wilson tonight, first time up, a little uh, change up and a little comebacker to the mound. Keeping the ball down to ground. And a one two Wilson Ramos a late reaction on that ninety five heater. Taylor and Ross to follow top of the fourth. And as we've been tracking pitches tonight. And a busy Nats fan. He's all over the place. Oh, Nata, dude. Trying to help his ball club go up three or four nothing here. He's a not sure. Ramos on a breaking ball, deep third. Daniel Murphy right on target. And he got Ramos by a step or less, one out. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. Michael A. Taylor struck out swinging first time up. In this series 0 for 6 with 5 K's. He blistered the ball his first time up last night. Want a rebate jumped straight up and took a hit away from him at third. That was a breaking ball that was hanging in the zone a bit. This one not in the air very long and out of play anyway. And that's going to find a way to tack on a few more to Jacob DeGrom. That three or four is looking huge the way Joe Ross is pitching. Two's looking good. Yeah. Taylor on one and two. Got him with a 93 heater upstairs. Four K's for DeGrom. Taylor twice. Joe Ross next. For the achiever in you, PNC Bank, with our minor league report and the former TCU lefty, Matt Perk. 11 starts single A and double A had to kind of go back and start over at the lower levels. And at 46 innings 26 uh, 28 strikeouts. So we're rooting for Matt Perk enjoyed meeting him when the Nats drafted him a few years ago and a tremendous young man. We hope he makes his way back. Joe Ross. One for 14 as a big league hitter. DeGrom trying to put his third straight zero on the board with Murphy, Cespedes, and Duda coming up.
Joe's got a good swing. He's going to be a good major league hitting pitcher. He got a good idea up there. I like the balance in his stance. The stride short. He's got good bat speed. It's just a matter of repetition. He's spitting on that. Wow. <laughs> Not even nibbling on low breaking balls. Two and two. Spitting on that, too. that. Fastball didn't miss by that much. And Ross out to center. A little over toward the gap now for Curtis Granderson. And a 1 2 3 for DeGrum. Second time he's done that in the last three innings. Daniel Murphy in the first. And Jacob DeGrom with the fastball in. They're doing a nice job of just pounding the strike zone. Typical Joe Ross out in time for Toyota Case for Kids. The Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children and families by making a donation of 37 bucks to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by an ads pitcher this season. Dan, you got more on Joe Ross. FP, when you think about a leader on a baseball field, that's typically a term that's reserved for veterans. But Max Scherzer has become a little bit of a mentor for Joe Ross recently. And he's been trying to tell Ross that you can be a leader on the mound by how you work. When you have the ball, you can lead. It's all about the way you operate, how you go about your business. Doesn't matter how many days you've been in the big leagues. If you go about it the right way, you attack hitters, you do your job, you can be a leader on the mound. Good stuff. Yeah, it doesn't act like or handle himself or carry himself like he's 22. That's well, a good mentor. I, I, I'm, I'm convinced that for younger players. Who breaks you in is all the difference in the world. And what I mean by that. Zimmerman backhand gets rid of it in a hurry. One of Ryan Zimmerman's best plays at first base. We'll get to your thought in a moment, but how about that? Yeah, in between hop, Joe Ross doing a good job of getting over to first base and a perfect feed right on the money from Ryan Zimmerman. So watch the tricky hop here, the top spin grounder at the end. Anytime that first hop is in the dirt in front of home, you know you're going to get a tricky hop. But how about the feed from Ryan Zimmerman? Would have been a lot longer throw from third, but a perfect feed from first. Nicely mm -hmm. done. That was excellent. Here's Cespedes. And important to make a play like that, so this guy hits where the base is empty. A lot of sliders his first time up, down and away. There's one. It's another one. But if you're not on a veteran based team as a young player and you don't have somebody like a Max Scherzer or a Jason Worth, Denard Span, Ian Desmond, guys like that to break you in, I've seen guys just kind of flounder as young players on ball clubs that don't have good leaders. 
when you have guys that know how to win or know how to work hard or have work ethic as a younger player you're just looking at them you're absorbing you're a sponge you're listening to everything they say you're mimicking their workouts their routines how they wear their uniform everything because you want to be like them on the other side if you ha don't have those guys it's harder front door slider Escobar to his left wheels and fires got him Cespedes runs well for a big strong guy and quite a play by Escobar the infield corners have been slick right here. Well, I gave him two stars on this. If you remember, maybe about what a week and a half ago, you know, Escobar playing as shallow as any third baseman in baseball. He's backed up recently to get more range. He's feeling more comfortable with the baseball on the dirt at third base. He was deep there. He wouldn't have got to that play two weeks ago. So he'll go out second base way on the shift against Lucas Duda. Who Joe Ross walked first time up. Joe Ross has the Mets behind in the count almost every time here. Putting the ball in play, and the veterans behind him are responding to that. Target in. That means fastball. It's up and in. 1 1. That's a good pitch. Not that it's a strike, it was definitely a ball, but a good pitch to Lucas Duda. And if you remember at Nats Park, they tied him up with the fastball in, and Joe Ross trying to go back in there where he's had success before. That ball hit a ton to right center. The Mets are on the board. Seventh home run for Duda in his last seven games. Wow. And you could tell by that first foul ball that his timing is absolutely perfect. They let him get extended. Look where Ramos is set up and he hit the target. But you have to tie up Lucas Duda right now. He, he's locked in. He's not missing fastballs with a lot of plate and he shows you why right here. That is large where that baby comes well, down. I like the fact that they pitched around him first time up walked him because he's not going to hurt you on the bases and I like the fastball in but he is not missing fastballs down the middle. Now a strike to Wilmer Flores who made a home run bid his first time. Pinning Jason Worth up against the wall and left 104 miles an hour when it left the bat. Woke the crowd up here at City Field too. Ross had retired eight in a row. I was about to drop the same seats, everybody going to break. Had a no hitter going. That ball found some seats about 430 away. Good slider from Ross to Flores right back in the strike zone. One ball, two strikes. For the Mets, their 90th homer of the year. They're eighth in the league. The Nats have hit 100. But they've only given up 76 with that blast. Target in. Good pitch. It is. Hey, you're going to give up some home runs, especially to hot hitters. What did you do before it? You didn't walk anybody? What do you do after it? He had two big defensive plays right before the home run, keeping the Nats ahead. That's a good fastball right to the outside edge. Anthony Rendon throws out Wilmer Flores inning over. So the Mets get a run. Top of the order for the Nationals. Anthony Rendon, Escobar, and Harper on a hoagie night in Queens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a gut bomb is what that is. Serious, out. serious gut bomb.
telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Lucas Duda, 19th home run of the year, 46th RBI. And not a lot of RBIs for a guy with 19 homers. Mets problem, not enough guys have been on base in front of Lucas Duda. Anthony Rendon 0 for 2, fly ball to center, swinging strikeout. Time to get the bats busy again. That's about hit the Mets 5 to 1. Next two batters after Anthony have three of those hits. That was close on the outside edge. Pitchers must love throwing to Travis Darno. He's such a good framer back there. Very subtle movement, soft hands. Makes a lot of balls look like strikes. I think he was the reason Jerry Mills was scuffling last night. Over to Lucas Duda, one out. Maryland football season tickets are on sale now and start at just 175 bucks. Visit umterps.com or call 1 800 I M A T E R P. Fear the turtle. Take your radio, listen to Johnny Holiday. Yes. Escobar with a pair of singles. Right field for one, pulled the other. Where's he going? Up the middle this time? Down the middle with 93 for a strike. Jacob DeGrom. He's now retired six in a row and seven of the last eight. He bolts another one. Not happy with that call from Jordan Baker. So he felt like he had to be swinging. Strike two certainly affected what happened on the next pitch. Two outs. Inside the numbers, Jeep and Bryce. On base percentage plus slugging versus divisional opponents this year. The guys who really hurt teams that they see a lot. Cabrera, Harper, Goldschmidt. He'll be in Nationals Park this week. Mike Trout and Joey Votto. You know, Oscar Bar ran past Jordan Baker right there and kind of slowed down and said something to him about that second strike. Watch. He made a point to go right by him. Kept walking. Five hole. Rice with a solid clean single to right in the first. Then DeGrom got him up and in with a breaking ball to pop him up foul to Duda for the first out third inning. They might be trying to let something fly here with two outs if he gets a pitch to work with. That was 95 feet running away from him. Next home run will be number 30. Two RBIs away from 70. Harper to left. How about that swing? Two for three is Bryce, and I love it when they boo him. I don't know if he hears it or not, but the louder they boo him, it seems like the better he does on the road. That's a sweet swing right there. That's how you win a batting title, folks. Use the whole field. Watch this. You want to pitch me away? I'll take my base hits to left. Boom, head to the baseball, little extent shown. Not trying to hit it 400 feet. What a swing. What a under control swing by Bryce Harper. Harper has 109 hits on the year. Two behind Escobar for the team lead. And Ryan Zimmerman has had two, I mean, hard contacted bats tonight. Line drive out to center, base hit up the middle. Boy, just tell all of his stuff is on time. 
He's got the bat cock going at the top where he's kind of pointing the barrel toward the pitcher getting his wrist in the right position. There's not a lot of hand movement and he's standing taller than he was earlier in the year just looking to pound down on the baseball. Ninety four in the zone lower part. Counts even one one. Slider low, good call by Jordan Baker. Zimmerman, three for seven career against DeGrom with a home run, four RBIs. DeGrom's given up nine home runs this year. Keeping it away from Ryan with 90. All right, he's betting fastball, got a 2 1 slider, and pitch number 100 coming here in the fifth inning from Jacob DeGrom. A very significant number looking ahead to the rest of this game. A check of Harper. Went 113 his last start against the Dodgers. In seven and two thirds innings. Big crowd at City Field again tonight. Two one Nats and a two two to Zimmerman. Off speed got it. Jacob DeGrom, five strikeouts in five innings, but triple digit on the pitch count. What does your dad do for a living? He does a lot of the voices on The Simpsons. That's Hank Azaria with his family at the ballpark tonight. I didn't recognize him. Come up here and do my voice. It have to be better than the one I have. Joe Ross, 61 pitches, 41 strikes. Leadoff man Kelly Johnson. We can't all be John Miller. You know. That's a good voice. Or can we? <laughs> what I don't know. I sure enjoyed hearing Chuck Thompson earlier tonight. Didn't enjoy that. Kelly Johnson, his second line drive, and the time runs on for the Mets. 
in the fifth inning. Travis Darno next. So tomorrow night in the Sunday night game that ESPN will take, it is Jordan Zimmerman and Noah Syndergaard. The D-backs and Paul Goldschmidt are in for four. And the rest of the weekend will be spent at home with the Colorado Rockies. And it'll be so strange to look out at shortstop and not see Troy Tulowitzki. Cargo, one of the hottest hitters on the planet Ooh. right now, too. Well, his July numbers were crazy. Travis Darno bouncing ball to Escobar first time, and Ross spins one of his best sliders of the night. Fastball, he follows it up with 93. There's Carlos Torres wearing his new number 72. He got the win last night. Thanks to the Flores walk off homer. Struck out the side in the 12th. Look in the Mets dugout. If I can see anybody with a helmet on down there. We don't have a real good angle. Pinch hit for the Grom here. Well, slider away. So Jacob DeGrom stays and may be looking to lay down a bunt here to get Kelly Johnson to second base. Mercedes Benz on the pitch track. Yeah, a couple of good three. couple of good sliders in the three pitch see a first pitch, third pitch, and a fastball taken. Maybe Travis Darno guessed wrong that whole at bat. Jacob DeGrom, three sacrifice bunts this year. Escobar pinching in from third. Zimmerman ready to charge. He'll kind of just massage it back to the screen. I mean, it's got to be a good bunt. Kelly Johnson, not a burner by any means. So DeGrom will be best suited if he tries to bring it with him to first because Ryan Zimmerman has to hold Johnson on. You know, that's about right in his grill. Lays it down well, very well. Zimmerman receives it from Ross on the one three sacrifice, and that'll give the number nine hitter, Ruben Tejada. Nicely done. A chance to tie things up. Get some high fives in his dugout. Jacob DeGrom trying to help himself out with a perfect sacrifice bunt. And there have been times when we've seen managers leave a pitcher in to do that and then take him out. Bullpen heating up as we mentioned with Carlos Torres. And we'll see how Terry Collins plays it. Tejada first time up a ground ball to Anthony Rendon. Four in the inner half. Good late sink. And Ramos has been framing the high strike well tonight. Look at him just kind of put that ball right in the zone. Matter of fact. Tejada, 19 RBIs this year. 0 for 4 career against Ross. Kelly Johnson, second base, two outs. Now they're liking that fastball in against Tejada. I don't think they want to speed him up with a slider in the strike zone. Oh, 
to try one in the zone and break it out of the zone down the way, but a two seam fastball in looks good. Well, they did throw him a slider and he couldn't reach it. Yeah, if you're going to throw it, put it out there. Four K's for Joe Ross, two in the inning. Young man pitching very well and has a 2 1 lead after five. And for every Nationals walk this season, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to support Girls on the Run DC. The Nats have 310 walks for a total of $15,500. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Jason Worth, top of the sixth. 0 for 1 with a base on balls tonight. That was the walk that loaded the bases with two outs first inning. And then Ian Desmond lined that base hit to center. Pretty close 3 2 pitch. It was. Better than the one Tyler Clipper threw him on pitch number 13 last night. One ball, one strike. So here goes DeGrom, sixth inning, 103 pitches right now. He's given three hits since that first inning, but only one since the third. Such a good eye on that strike zone. And Jason Worth, something to work with here on three and one. And low strikes been there all night. Low strike from the tallest umpire in the big leagues, but look how far down he gets to get ready. I might be mistaken, but I think Jordan Baker's seven foot six. <laughs> Three two. You know, and years ago they unified the umpires, no American League staffs, no National League staffs anymore. But and the strike zone is supposed to be the same, but you know it's not. No. Every umpire has his own zone. They're just not going to vary from what they feel is the best thing for them. So Tejada throws out Worth, first out, sixth inning. Ian Desmond, one for two, the big blow of the night, the two run single, the highlight of the Nats box score as he steps in here. Escobar, a two for three night. Bryce Harper, two for three. So the Nats have five hits from their two, three, and four hitters. Next time up, Desmond struck out looking on a fastball in there. Yeah. 
I like the nuances of the strike zone. I like the fact that different umpires have different zones. The disadvantage that today's player has is there's not American League umpires and National League umpires. Back in the day, you knew the crew, you knew the guys, they yeah. knew you. If you were a guy that didn't snap and you snapped, they knew they missed a call. If you were a snapper, they'd let you bark a little bit because they knew who you were and your personality. But now with guys cruising all over the league, I don't think they get to know personalities as much as they used to. Good and point. hitters don't get to learn strike zones like we used to. With Frank Pulley back there, you knew that you had to cover two or three inches on the outer half as a left-handed hitter. And with Ed Montague, you knew that he liked the high strike. So as a hitter, you knew with National League umpires, the guy strikes on a given night. Now, I know there's all kinds of data that shows umpire strike zones now, but it's not the same as having the same crews in the league all the time and, and getting to know them very well. Ian Desmond thought he might have foul tipped the ball, but Baker calls him out. Strikeout number six for Jacob DeGrom. I think they're going to take a look at this one. Randy Knorr using some minutes. I can't tell from that angle. Yeah. Ball got into the mid of Darno on the fly, so there was no skip off the dirt up into the mid. Randy Nor shakes his head no, and there are two outs. Wilson Ramos is next. Is there a redirect? It, it looked like there was, but then it also looked like Darno caught it. I think you could definitely see a redirect there. Yeah. Ian's question was did the ball hit the dirt and it did not well that's hard to pick up that was a nice shot Wilson Ramos a bouncer to the pitcher and one to third Wilson Ramos about due to get hot isn't he yeah scuffling he's 0 for 14 and one for his last 21 in a rough road trip Fastball running back to the outside edge. Hit well out of play. So 116 pitches for DeGrom. He went 115 against the Cubs and a 6 1 loss four starts ago, and that was five and a third innings. Wow. He's on his game right now, and he has shut down the Nats since their quick start. To the evening. This game is now into the middle of the sixth. 2 1 Washington. Uh, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of Arlington, Mercedes-Benz of Alexandria. It's a Mercedes-Benz game summary, two to one Nationals as we head to the bottom of the six. Joe Ross is doing his thing, folks, and he has matched Jacob DeGrom pitch for pitch. DeGrom had a rough first. He settled into this one nice. Joe Ross has been locked in. A home run to Lucas Duda is all the Mets have to show tonight. Just a couple of hits. The slider's been good. Been pounding the strike zone. Typical Joe Ross, I'm not 22 years old outing. He has been spectacular. 
So to the bottom of the six top of the order for the Mets. One big blow the Lucas due to two run or rather two out solo home run in the fourth. They've only had one other hit Kelly Johnson's leadoff single last inning. Curtis Granderson has pulled it on the ground twice. Once to Rendon once to Zimmerman. Big inning here for Joe Ross because you got a Thornton and a Storn and a Papelbon ready for seven eight and nine. He goes off speed and drops a strike steals one on Curtis Granderson there. This is Joe Ross's personal save inning right here right now one two three coming up for the Mets. Bobby Parnell about to take over with DeGrom having thrown one hundred and seventeen. Follows up the changeup with a ninety four heater. He's had the Mets hitters off their timing all night. One ball, two strikes. Got him, 84. Rare changeup from Joe Ross tonight. Haven't seen too many of those. Look at it again to make sure I got it right. No, just a backup slider at 84. That wasn't a changeup. It acted like one, though. Look at, just kind of squirted out of his hand. Didn't really break at all. Granderson playing the break that wasn't there. Daniel Murphy next. Excuse me, Bob. Big first out here in the six. Absolutely. Ross and Wilson Ramos in a pretty good sequence here together. Jammed him. Zimmerman over to his right. He can shovel it to Ross. Two outs. Into the nine o'clock hour here in New York City. BCFP DK. The Nats and the Mets matching up. And here's a key at bat now. Because for the first time tonight, Yoenis Cespedes will represent the tying run. Nats already had two on the board the first time he hit and bounced out to Desmond. It was still two nothing. When Escobar robbed him on a play to his left in the fourth. So big out here for a number of reasons. You could have Matt Thornton set up for the seventh with two lefties coming up and Duda and Kelly Johnson and Willard and Flores a righty sandwiched in between. But if Cespedes gets on, it's Joe Ross versus Lucas Duda. Again. Started Cespedes. For the first time tonight with the fastball. And another. There's the slider. He's had Cespedes foul off four or five balls. Bouncing over by the Nats dugout with that breaking ball tonight. Key at bat, bottom of the six, two one Washington. That was a little bit up and a little bit more plate than Joe Ross wanted there in a one two count. But once you establish a slider with a lot of break hitters are going to move their hands to where they think it's going to be or where it's been all night and you can get away with a hanger or two. Cespedes hooks one down the line and to the left of the pole and short. You can get away with a hanger or one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Caught it out front. Well, 
One ball and two strikes. Bury it. There it is. What a pitching performance by Joe Ross, the rookie tonight. He has Cespedes 0 for 3. This one into the seventh. He's due to bat second. If there's a pitch hitter, he's had quite a night. Smear the seeds on Jason Moore's face and then he grows a beard. Is that how it works on Wednesday, August 5th at 7.05? I think he can do that. And if you're one of the first 20,000 fans, you get the Jason Worth Chia Pet. I'm in. I want one. And I'm going to smear the seeds on and watch it grow. And then we'll see what happens from there. Do you have to give it a haircut? Do you trim it with your, your edgers? Fantastic addition to any garden. So, Joe Ross on deck here. As this game goes to the top of the seventh inning and Bobby Parnell against the Nats in Washington had one really good outing and then the really bad one that gave the Nats that game three series clinching win. Yeah the slider in the dirt came back to haunt him as a couple of runners advanced and ended up scoring fastball 92 from Parnell slider 82. Michael a Taylor. One for one against Bobby. Gets away with a fastball up and in. So the ground goes six innings, six hits, two runs, a walk, seven strikeouts. And Taylor trying to steal a hit. Murphy, look at him play it, but all he didn't pull due to off the bag. And the Nats might want to take a look. Wait, what? I thought Andy Fletcher would go ahead with the safe call. We'll see. Did he stay on the bag? I looked down and already put hit in my scorebook because I thought this pulled Lucas Duda off the base, and this is why they're bunting on Daniel Murphy. And I don't think his foot was near. Let's see it again. I didn't even think this was close. Was it? Well, that's close. So, looks like the Nats are going to challenge. First base umpire who made the call, Andy Fletcher, will join the crew chief, Jerry Meals, over on the third base side. See this? Hold on. And this is big with the pitcher on deck and a possible sacrifice. This is where you have to take the emotion out of it and say, will New York overturn this? Not whether he's safe or out, but will New York overturn it? And I don't think they will. And I think Lucas right. Duda's foot was on the base, and I think Andy Fletcher got it right. That took no time at all. Gary decided? Yep. I was looking at the scoreboard. Called him out? I mean, they were on the headsets for maybe 10 or 15 seconds. I don't know. All right. So here's Joe Ross, who has thrown 84 pitches, 59 strikes. 
asking a lot of him to come out for the seventh and face Lucas Duda. We'll see how it all plays out. Third at bat of the night, he has bounced to short and hit a fly ball to center. Two and zero. Oh. Mets and Nats have had some serious battles. The last three ball games. First two in D.C. on the last series, kind of lopsided. Seven two Nats, then seven two Mets. And then four three. Two one last night. Two one tonight. Well, maybe the fact that Lucas Duda is hitting 298 against lefties with five home runs and eight doubles is why Matt Williams is sticking with Joe Ross in this situation. Duda hitting 219 against righties. Ross up the middle, ball bounces and then deadens, and he's going to beat that out. Joe Ross with his second big league hit. Wasn't his first one just like that? Kind of, yeah. Checked up nice for him. And he's aboard for Rendon. Once that ball got in the gap past the pitcher, he had a chance. And look at the spin on that ball, just all over the place. Pretty good play by Tejada to make it that close. Good hustle by Joe Ross. And bat died a hero, and look at Joe Ross go. Told you he could hit. Ball was scorched. Anthony Rendon is 0 for 2 career against Bobby Parnell. Ninety-five. Hit speed on that. I'm going to say thirty-eight. I'll say 62. Oh, wow. <laughs> 36 miles an hour. And it's a knock, just like one that's 104. Rendon gets inside one. Ball carrying left field corner over there to grab it. Cespedes. Didn't sound like much off the bat. It kept on going, and that ball caught about 330 away. Two outs. National League East, the Nats lead by two over the Mets. Marlins trailing at home. Phillies killing the Braves 12 to 2 tonight. Atlanta's lost five in a row. Miami three in a row. So a two horse race, and the Nats are in the lead. Here's Escobar, two for three tonight. And against Bobby Parnell, career two for 10. Hit speed four to one, three game lead in my division. But I'm not, I'm not keeping track. Truck dropping a 36 on us. That's you in the fast lane with your blinker on. 36. Cabs go faster than that across the river. 5 p.m. 2 and 0. Escobar hopping all over a 2 0 heater. Feeling frisky tonight. He's coming out of his shoes on every single hack. Not that he normally doesn't, but his timing tonight is darn near perfect. And this is a big hitter for Bobby Parnell. Bryce Harper on deck. That's could have a lefty ready. We can't see their bullpen. Not going to matter. Ground ball right side. 
So we get to the seventh inning stretch here at City Field. It's the Hyundai seventh inning stretch. The Nats have scored two runs a long time ago in the first. They've stranded six. This one is up to the bullpens the rest of the way for the Mets. And in a moment, we'll see about Joe Ross. By Land Rover above and beyond. By Airlines for America, where airplanes land, opportunity takes off. And by Night Point Systems, they offer the technology you need when you need it. It's a bullpen gate here at City Field. But no bullpen gate opening up right now for the Nats. Joe Ross, seventh inning, and how about the sixth? One of his best. Well, one, two, three coming up in a one run ball game against your division rival that's two games back, and it's all Joe Ross did was strike out Curtis Granderson, get Daniel Murphy to ground out to first, and then strike out Cespedes. So a nice six, and he's trying to continue that here in the seventh against the guy that's really seen him well tonight, Lucas Duda, a walk and a home run. He's been the Mets' offense. And I wonder how surprised Duda is that he steps in in the seventh and is not facing a lefty. Shift is on. Out into right field, Anthony Rendon. Duda has walked and then Homer deep into the seats in right center. Now, this is the big at bat. Huge. Duda goes the other way. Worth can only watch it. Joe Ross still in the game to face a guy who homered and now Duda does it again and the lead is gone. Well you thought once Joe Ross got through six that Matt Williams would turn it over to the bullpen. Williams showing confidence in his young right hander against Lucas Duda. And Duda makes the Nats pay in a big way with his second home run of the night. His eighth home run, folks, in his last seven games. Nobody hotter than Lucas Duda. Lucas Duda hit 30 last year. Now he has 20. And then showing bunt, Wilmer Flores. AC Jansen just let Matt Lecroy know that he's good. Might be signaling for somebody else to get up. But there is, as FP pointed out last inning, another lefty on deck in Kelly Johnson. Great pitch, a slider drops in, 2 2. 
And we've seen Matt Williams in the past with a couple of lefties do up in a close game go to his lefties in the bullpen but tonight he decided to go with Joe Ross. And Joe has been brilliant tonight. Except for one guy. Ian Desmond up with that one. Wilmer Flores trying to pull that outside pitch and got the rollover grounder. Now it's Ross against the lefty Kelly Johnson. Regarding the left side of the bullpen Felipe Rivero threw 22 pitches last night. Matt Thornton. Available hasn't pitched in this series. He hasn't pitched since the 26th of July. Kelly Johnson tonight a line drive to left caught by Worth, and then a base hit up the middle last time. So Ross has only given up three hits all the lefties and the two Duda hits have left the yard. That ball's well hit to left. Worth has to play the hop off the wall. And Right now Joe Ross getting everybody out except these two left handed batters. Well you remember it is you know when he went back to triple A he never went past five innings. They kept him right at five and all of his triple A starts. So he's in uncharted waters here in the seventh. And I have to be honest I'm shocked that he went out for the seventh. I, 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 mean, I can't lie. Walked one batter tonight. Struck out six. Gave the Mets four hits. Two homers to Duda. And two opposite field hits to Kelly Johnson. He did everything he could tonight. Just couldn't handle the big left handed power guy. Welcome home. We can't wait. And it'll be Doug Fister for the Nats. Great win at Miami Wednesday. Two earned runs in six innings. They'll be facing Zach Godley, called up July 23rd. The Nats have never seen him. We'll get you going with Nats Extra from the ballpark at 6:30. That will be Monday night. Tomorrow night on the ESPN Sunday night game, Jordan Zimmerman. And Noah Syndergaard. Joe Ross was outstanding tonight. Now Casey Jansen takes over for the young right hander. Fastball 88, slider 84. He'll cut the fastball, curveball, and change to go with it. Travis Darno facing Jansen for the first time. Rendon trying to keep the runner close with Desmond playing the pull. And Casey, who's been throwing the ball very well, drops the breaker in for a strike. Juan Uribe for the pitcher next. And Jansen upset with the location, just smacked his hand on his glove, got away with one right there, but he's ahead 0 2.
Pass ball. Just about a perfect pitch, and it's ball one. Hmm. Good pitch, good frame. I don't know. And he throws an off speed pitch, and there's Desmond. Ian to Zimmerman. Two down. And now Uribe. One Uribe as a Met. 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. 2 for 12 overall. He's at nine homers, 25 RBIs on the year. And he is two for six career against Casey Jansen. And they're going to walk him. Take on Tejada in the number nine spot. So, Maribe basically wasted here with first base open from the Mets standpoint. Didn't want to take a chance. With one Maribe, even if you want to pitch around him and O2 him, you know, bounce a couple of pitches, see if he'll fish. Of leaving something out over the plate. Or maybe a good bad ball hitter, so you like the move right here. He can really extend on sliders down and away, use the whole field, and that's why Matt Williams choosing to walk him and go after Ruben Tejada on deck. Ruben Tejada, ground ball and a strikeout against Joe Ross. Ninety two pitches, by the way, for Joe, sixty four strikes in six and a third. Only gave up hits to two batters. Tejada's got that look like most major league hitters do when you walk somebody to get to them. Little kind of a half swing. Brian Zimmerman flips to Jansen. Ryan's handled first base beautifully tonight. Damaging inning. Duda goes deep for the Nats. Harper, Zimmerman, and Worth. Now it's all tied up. At City Field. These two battling it out. These teams look like they're both 20 over 500 battling for first place. So we're waiting for a net to go deep. Maybe Bryce will be the guy. 
Every time it happens, $250 to the Children's National Health System. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Very generous in those donations. And here's Hanzo Robles, who was really bringing it in the 11th inning last night. Yeah, maybe made the play of the game last night, too, on the Jason Worth Scribber down the third base line when his foot slipped out. He went into the splits and still made a one hop throw to first base. Fastball 95, slider 88, two pitch guy. 34th appearance and opponents hitting 211 against Robles. Also through the fastball that got Bryce Harper ejected. He calls it his ejecto pitch. <laughs> Then he struck out Zimmerman swinging. So here we are, top of the eighth inning, and the Nats need to do something big or a couple of things small to retake the lead. Bryce Harper fan. And, and if you remember the matchup last night between Robles and Harper, it was all fastballs away. Want to rebay in for defense at third. I'll put Daniel Murphy over to second and. And the reason I say that is because Bryce Harper had a base hit to left his last time up and he just saw Lucas do to leave the other way. And maybe he's thinking the same thing based on the experience he had against Robles last night. And Wilmer Flores shifts over to shortstop. Harper takes one away. Two oh, look out here. Guy's got a good fastball. He throws it at ninety four to get the swing and miss. Bryce tried to hit that one on the tarmac at LaGuardia. Pretty good hack, too. See how low his hands were right there. Oh. I mean, he, he took his hands. Usually, he lays the bat on his back shoulder. He took his hands and had him almost. Watch where his hands are. Look, that, that's different. That's two strike approach. It's emergency hack. Usually, he starts with the bat flat on his shoulder, goes to where the bat's straight up and down. But he's starting with his hands kind of lower in the zone. Bryce Harper still two for four tonight, but Robles strikes him out for the second time in the series. You can see the sequence, everything on the outer half of the plate. Ryan Zimmerman, one for three. He's hit the ball hard twice. Blaze struck him out swinging. After the Harper ejection last night. All systems go right here if you're Ryan Zimmerman get something with a lot of plate and let it rip. Another 2 0 count. Drew Storen, Matt Thornton. Figure Storn if the Nats take the lead. Thornton if it's still 2 2. Zimmerman out to center. Didn't get it. Granderson has it 2 down. Next up, Jason Worth. Visit the Fitz this summer for great baseball, affordable family fun. 
military appreciation night camo shirt all kinds of good stuff at the fits for all your ticket promotional information visit Potomac Nationals dot com. Jason Worth facing Robles for the first time a walk over two tonight. And well up and in two and oh. Good pitch located a 2 0 fastball. Jason Worth was looking for something in. Painted it down away. Yeah, right hander going 2 0 on all three hitters here. He's got the first two guys. He's got swing and miss stuff once he gets back in the count. That's at the top of the order two up bottom eight. Big crowd trying to urge them there. Have struck out nine more times tonight. It's a 2 2 score. Bottom eight coming. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light and who else would it be Lucas Duda has provided the Mets offense here tonight. They have two runs on four hits and Lucas Duda has two home runs so he's got all the RBIs half the hits and he's hit his eighth home run in his last seven games. He had six home runs in six games coming into this one. Now eight in seven and 20 on the year. Bottom of the eighth coming up Matt Thornton into the ball game with Granderson and Murphy two lefties to lead things off. And we'll see what Matt might have in mind for Joanna Cespedes. At 36 appearance for Thornton. You are at 185 so the Nats have three sub two ERA guys in their bullpen Thornton Storn and Papelbon. And here's one of them from the left side Matt Thornton hasn't pitched since Sunday when he had an eight pitch. 
seventh inning against the Pirates and got him one, two, three through eight strikes. First pitch a strike to Curtis Granderson, who is four for 28 against him. A lot of time in the same division, Granderson, Detroit, and then the Yankees, and then Thornton, long time with the White Sox. Curtis Granderson 0 for 3 tonight. 95 low and in to an orange. Like a double, Bryce cuts it off. Little double clutch on the throw, but he had no chance. A good at bat by Granderson. He got ahead in the count 2 1. He got a fastball and he was ready for it. You see the foot down early? I mean, you can't get your foot down any earlier than that. Catches the belt high fastball out front. Good hustle by Bryce Harper to try to make this a play, but it was a double right off the bat. And now it's up to Daniel Murphy to, to get Curtis Granderson at least to third base with nobody out. Murphy one for five career against Thornton. He's looking for a plate appearance that won't count as an at bat here. Thornton throwing Escobar on the grass at third. And they feel Murphy can move the runner without bunting here. Aaron Barrett just getting up, I believe, in the Nats bullpen. That's the first pitch he's thrown. He was outstanding here last night. to get around that 94 95 on the outer half and that's Matt Thornton's strength against lefties that kind of crossfire fastball with a downward tilt where he's stepping right at the lefty and throwing it to the outer half that's a tough one for Murphy to pull location key here on 0 2 Ramos jumped outside and that's where it went So here it boils down to one of those little things. Can you get the 90 feet or not? Cost the Nats last night. Murphy jammed, able to fight it off. I mean, as a hitter in this situation, you know, there's. Early in the game, you take care of yourself in an 0 2 count, meaning just hit the ball wherever. Right now, in a tie game at the bottom of the eighth, Daniel Murphy's trying to roll his wrists over on 94 away and pull it to the right side to advance Granderson. Tough assignment with two strikes. To the pitcher, and Thornton looking the runner back, and then he almost goosed one too high for Ryan Zimmerman. One out. Big out. Murphy tried. Did you see that right there? Yes, trying to roll his wrists over, just couldn't get past Matt Thornton. Text Masson's word of the day bloom to 29292. You can win a meet and greet with Matt Williams. It's brought to you by Outback Steakhouse, where the No Worries Wednesdays menu now available on Sundays. Strategy time. Steve McCaddy going to go out and talk to Matt Thornton. What do they want to do to Cespedes? First base open. Do you pitch carefully to him? Do you walk him to get to a guy with two home runs and get your left on left matchup? Wheels turning here. Chess match in the bottom of the eighth. Now well, you're thinking they have to walk him. This will be interesting. With all their time in the American League, Thornton and Cespedes have never matched up. Well, if you're going to walk him, would there be a trip to the mound, is all I'm saying. And maybe Steve McCaddy went out there and got the veteran Matt Thornton's opinion. How do you feel about pitching to Cespedes? What are you going to do right here? Do we want to bounce some sliders, throw him some changeups, or just flat out walk him? And I think I saw Wilson Ramos give the four sign. Yeah, they're going to walk him. So Lucas Duda against Matt Thornton is two for five career with an RBI.
just another good game. And these first two games are any indication of what the last couple of series between these two clubs is going to be like in this pennant race going into August and September. And I haven't seen City Field like this, folks. I have to be honest, since I've been here, this place is rocking right now. It goes to show what really good pitching can do. It can keep you in just about every game you play. And it doesn't take that many hits to win. Here's Duda, who's done plenty of hitting tonight. He is so locked in, it's ridiculous. He was on that. Twenty home runs for a ball club that's last in baseball in batting average and run scored. This is one of the few times he's had guys on base lately. I'm trying to call time out here. Ball and Lucas Duda seeing the ball so well, not biting. 2 2 game, bottom of the eighth. <laughs> Snapping off a nasty hook at 84. Flores on deck. One out. Duda to left. And it is over Jason Wirt's head. Scoring is Granderson. Cespedes will stop at third. And the Mets have the lead. And it evidently doesn't matter who's pitching to Lucas Duda. See the sequence, everything on the outer half, and that one just hung up there for Duda. That Thornton wanted to bury this one down the way, probably overthrew it, left it down the middle, and Duda's not missing mistakes, folks. We've seen that already a couple of times tonight. So Watch. Matt Thornton taken out of the game. Face four batters, retired just one of them, and Aaron Barrett scheduled to come in for Flores.
the bases on two homers and a double and he's driven in three runs. So Aaron Barrett he pitched two innings here last night the eighth and the ninth retired six in a row and he'll be on to face Wilmer Flores here with runners at second and third and just one out. Flores bounced out to short against Barrett last night. So he's 0 for 4 career against him. Third base, Cespedes. And I mean, he was right behind Curtis Granderson. I thought he might follow Granderson home by a few feet. But he stopped at third and then Duda, of course, at second. Infield in. Second largest crowd in the history of City Field going crazy here. Just under 43,000. First pitch slider, nasty. Strike one. The Mets are making a bid to be one game out of first place later tonight. The Mets have to keep this a 3 2 game. Fastball got the call of the knees. Well, big pitch. And obviously, Barrett brought in for the strikeout. So now, is he going to go to his slider with the runner on third and one out? Or does he go to the fastball again? I say slider. It's his out pitch. He was brought in for a strikeout. O2 and he buries the slider and Wilson Ramos makes a tremendous block. I mean, Wilson has had a fantastic night behind the plate. Well, if that's your pitch, that's your pitch, and you have to trust your catcher. Just spiked it a little too soon. It was never a strike. So an easy take for Flores. And now you kind of paint yourself into a corner right here. Flores could be on the fastball. He's looking for it. See so double up. Throw another slider, see what happens. Late swing, ball buried, and a tag by Ramos. Two down. Aaron Barrett has thrown some of his best sliders of the season in this series. Yeah, doubled up on a good pitch. That one to strike a little bit longer. So now Flores can't sit around and wait to see. He had to commit. And now Steve McCaddy out to the mound again. Going to talk to Barrett with. A righty on deck and Travis Darno and Kelly Johnson a lefty in the box first base open two outs important to keep this set three to two obviously. Kelly Johnson 0 for two career against Barrett with a couple of strikeouts. First base open there is a right hander on deck in the catcher Darno. And Johnson the other guy that hurts. Joe Ross even though neither of his hits led to scores. Turns it over. That's Aaron's 88 changeup. So maybe a pitch around here as the count goes to two and zero. Oh. Well, it's always, I mean, a show of confidence in a younger pitcher. To trust him to pitch around a guy and not to leave anything hittable. And in the process to load the bases if the walk occurs. Uh, I've had many discussions with many big league managers about some feel like they have to take it in their own hands and just put out four and walk him because they can't trust the guy to execute the plan or some say, hey, it's in the big leagues and they should be able to execute it. Three and one.
Looked like an off speed pitch popped up. Escobar over there. He has it. But Lucas Duda has done it to the Nats again. Home run in the fourth, home run in the seventh, RBI double in the eighth. The Nats have three outs left. Of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Nats Couch Cam. I see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Now that's a close knit group at the ballpark. See if they got a couple runs in them. No pressure. Desmond Ramos and Taylor against Jerry's Familia, who pitched an inning and two thirds here last night. Got the ball game from the ninth to the eleventh. Juan Lagares takes over in center. That moves Curtis Granderson to right, where he's been playing all year. We'll see if that inning two thirds has any effect on Familia, but you'd think adrenaline's going to have a lot to do with tonight with the big right hander. Fastball will touch a hundred, and it has a lot of movement on it. And a wipeout slider to go with it. Forty eighth appearance for Familia on the year. 50 strikeouts, 13 walks, and opponents hit 198 against the Mets closer. And has he ever had a bigger save opportunity? Follow the Nats wherever you go with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. So Familia came in in the ninth inning last night with one out, two men aboard. Ian Desmond had just walked. And Ian is one for seven career against him. That ball cutting away and low away. Ball one. Desmond tonight, one for three. Base hit, two RBIs. Familiar could be wild. Got to get him in the strike zone. He's a guy that has harnessed that fastball at times, become one of the better closers in the league. But as we saw last night, he can still launch it. 1 1. Desmond inside out swing. That's right to Granderson. Ramos and Taylor of the next two. I just hate to drop the first two games of this series without using Storn or Papelbon. You want to get him in the game, and you needed a lead to do that. Michael A. Taylor, 0 for 5 career against Familia. And then he'll follow Wilson Ramos, and he's 0 for 1 against the right hander. 
disguises that late break really well. Retired five in a row last night. Wilson Ramos gets on. You think Danny Espinosa is going to pinch run for him? So a big at bat right here. Familiar guy you can steal second on, even though with one out you're not going to bunt if Ramos reaches. Like to see Espinosa and his wheels on in a one run game here in the bottom of the ninth. Ramos to short. Wilmer Flores. And the Mets are one out away from winning the series. And going for a tie in the division tomorrow night. It'll be up to Michael A. Taylor, 0 for 6 against Familia, to get on board here. Familia struck him out last night. 42,996, the second largest crowd in City Field history. Clint Robinson in the number nine spot next. Michael Taylor, let it rip. See what happens. Got two runs on three hits in the first inning. No runs on four hits the rest of the night. And they are going crazy in Queens. <laughs> 